Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here in part three of our mini series on the three testaments of our father, talking about the Old Testament, which was brought to us by Moses and the New Testament, which was brought to us with the times of our Messiah and the Third Testament, which we are receiving now by way of Elijah or the Holy Spirit. And that's part of what all we're learning here in this Third Testament of the Bible here in chapter 38, which is about the three divine revelations and the seven seals. We're not talking too much about the section on the seven seals in this series. We're primarily focusing on these three divine revelations. Again, they are the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Third Testament of the Bible, which you can find a link to in the description of this video. So in this part, we're down here in verse 26, which says, my new lessons are the confirmation of those that I gave you in the second era, but they are yet more elevated. In that time, I spoke to the hearts of men, but now I speak to their spirits. And this is a very important understanding here is that this document is geared towards the spiritual nature of man and everything that's going on here. We learn about our guardian angels and the roles of other angels during this time. We learn how to speak or communicate spirit to spirit with our father, even our brother a little bit. It gets into a little bit on how telepathy works. And it's not quite like they talk about it in the movies. But, you know, this book does speak on it a little bit, as well as a lot of other spiritual things. We learn in John chapter 4 and verse 23 that our Father is in spirit and we are expected to worship Him in spirit. Well, in this third testament of the Bible, we learn how to do just that. Verse 27 says, I do not come to disown any of the words I spoke to you in the past. On the contrary, I come to duly fulfill them and give them their just explanation. Just as in those times, I said to the Pharisees who believed that the Messiah had come to destroy the law, do not think that I have come to counsel the law or the prophets, on the contrary, to comply with them. How could I have disowned that law or the prophecies if they were the foundation of the temple that in three eras was to be constructed in the hearts of humanity and was the announcement of my coming to the world. Now, that was a mouthful. So let's break this down just a little bit. He says that he didn't come to disown any of the words spoken in the Old Testament or the New Testament. And that should be noted is that none of the Third Testament contradicts anything in the New Testament or the Old Testament. That's one thing about scripture. That's one way you know when you're reading scripture or when you're reading something other than scripture is the contradictions. If what you're reading is divinely inspired, it will not have any contradictions whatsoever as what we see here in the third testament of the Bible. There may be a few translation errors as the original document was written in Spanish, but other than that, there are no contradictions whatsoever. Everything aligns with the Old Testament and the New Testament perfectly. And just like it says here, the Third Testament provides us with an explanation of many of the things that was misunderstood in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Like, for instance, the seven seals, the resurrection of the dead, how we are to be changed in a twinkling of an eye, the afterlife, heaven and hell, all types of doctrine that we have learned over the years are being explained in this book in great detail. It goes on to talk about how in the New Testament, we learned that our Messiah said that he didn't come to destroy the law or to get rid of the law. And neither does this book cancel the law. It actually has a whole section on the law and how it pertains to our life. 
what the laws truly meant, what they were for, and how we are to comply with those instructions. Same with the prophets, giving us detailed information on what the prophets meant in many of their prophecies. You have to understand, those guys lived thousands and thousands of years ago, and they didn't have the vocabulary to explain everything that they were talking about. Like the word meteor cannot be found in the Bible because they didn't know what a meteor was, and they simply called them stars. So it left plenty of room for confusion, and a lot of people ran with that confusion, making us believe that stars which are bigger than our earth would somehow come falling out of the sky. But anyway, notice right here where it says, how could I have disowned that law or those prophecies if they were the foundation of the temple that in three eras was to be constructed in the hearts of humanity? This is actually talking about the third temple here and how it is actually supposed to be constructed in our hearts. While there are those who are rejecting this doctrine, rejecting the third testament and are yet trying to build a brick and mortar temple, we learn in this document that their efforts are actually futile. Our father would never dwell in that man-made temple again. In fact, the only temple that he plans to tabernacle in from now on is our bodies, like Peter was talking about when he said that this spiritual house will be built of lively stones, which we are. We are the lively stones that will be used to create the third temple. And this book, the third testament of the Bible, explains the third temple. So those prophecies and the laws are the foundation for that temple. In other words, we had to understand the laws and obey those laws and we had to understand the prophecies, which are the promises of the third temple and the announcement of the kingdom of heaven. And he also spoke about his coming to the world. But stay tuned. Like I said, this is part three. We have a few more parts to go when we start to talk about why so many people are rejecting this document. It's going to go into detail who they are and what will be the end result of their detractions and the benefits to those that actually believe in this word and actually obey what it says. So make sure you subscribe. Check out the links to the videos appearing on the screen for other videos in this series and other videos that you may be interested in. Leave a comment before you go. Pray for us and Shalom.